All right, welcome back. We have an assignment here that is to use Excel to make a Minerva simulator. And I'm, what I'm showing you here is the same thing we were just looking at in the second mini lecture on this learning module. We've got a little toy Minerva model where you can present it with a queue pattern. You can define what memory traces are in memory and it will um, cause this pattern will cause the traces in the memory to get activated. You'll retrieve a memory response and you can even uh, evaluate the similarity between the queue and the memory response as well as plot it over here. Once we go through this tutorial, you'll be able to make this from scratch yourself in Excel. And doing this assignment should give you a little bit better understanding of, about how this model works. And if you're not super familiar with Excel or want to improve some, some of your Excel abilities, you might learn a couple of random things about using Excel by working through this tutorial. And uh, you should be able to do most of these same steps in Google Sheets also. So let's see, what I'm gonna do here is open up Excel, a brand new one. And so we can fit it in the window. So we've got our Excel spreadsheet. And uh, we need to, I'm gonna kind of flip back and forth between what we had there and a new one. Um, I'm just typing the word Q. I wanna take up uh, 10 spots here for a feature vector that will be our Q. So I'm just typing in one, 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 and then negative one. I wanna have five of these. So if you have a value, you can just like kind of make it turn that other crosshair and just drag it over. So now we've got our five ones. I can tell that we're gonna need more space. Uh, so if I just highlight all of those and right click, we can do column width. And I'm gonna set that to two. So that uh, makes it much smaller. And let's see, I think I'm gonna, well, we'll, we'll start with that. Um, all right. Uh, so we also need to make room for a whole bunch of different memory traces. So I just type memory here. And how about this to start? We're just gonna maybe make copies of this queue. So I'm just copying and pasting down one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, how many do we want? Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's good enough for me. Um, we can put lots of different things in memory. For now, I'm just going to simulate kind of uh, noisy exemplars. I'm just putting zeros all over the place, uh, kind of randomly. And, you know, this means that something like this, this kind of pattern has been presented a lot. Um, but every time the memory saw the pattern, maybe it encoded it with without low fidelity. It's almost like it was grainy or something like that. So we've got a bunch of patterns in there. Um, the other thing that we need to do in terms of steps here, so we've done this part, we've done this part. Next, we need to calculate the similarities and the activations. So, uh, I'm just going to have a column here. I'm going to call this similarities. Uh, I suppose for now I could maybe make this little the screen bigger so that it's easier to see what I'm doing. So I'll make it like this big and we'll zoom in and out as necessary. I'm trying to calculate the similarity between this queue and this memory trace. We'll start with that. Uh, to do that, we're going to use an Excel formula called correlation. And right in this cell here, I can just type equals and I'm gonna search for, as or keep typing corel for correlation. And there it is. And I can press enter. Mm, I don't like that, that messed it up. So I can do it again, corel, left parentheses, 
and it tells us what it wants. It wants array one and array two. So array one is this whole thing right here. And I can click the first element, I'm holding down my button and I'm moving it across. And this gives us the range a2, this is A, this is 2, so A2, 2, J2. We want to put a comma, and then we want to get our second array, which is this one here. A5 to J5. Press right parentheses, press enter, and this should compute the correlation. Now you might have a different number here, depending on what your values are. Uh, but if you make your values exactly the same as mine, you should get a 0 0.80. Now I want to calculate this for every, uh, I want to calculate the similarity between this trace and this trace, and this trace and this trace, and so on. And I, um, you know, how can we do that kind of quickly here? It would be nice if Excel would do something like this. Like if I just said, well, I want to drag this down and calculate it for all of these. But I got some problems. Here's the problem. You can do drag down stuff like that. Um, but look what's happening here. When I drag it down, um, it's taking the it's trying to calculate the similarity between this line and this line. And that's not quite what I want. I want the blue thing to stay up at the top. Same here. It's, it, it's making them all go down. And I don't want that. Um, I want the, the blue array to stay here and I want the red one to go down. And so we can do this by fixing the location of the blue one. And we could put dollar signs in front of the letters. Let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, it didn't work. Still messed up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go, go back. And... Ah, Excel. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So that didn't work. Um, that was actually the wrong thing to, to keep constant. Uh, I think it would work if we put the number, the dollar sign in front of the number. Let's try that. Okay, yes. And so essentially what that's saying is um, keep us on the second row and don't change that. So we're fixing the second row. And you can kind of double click on this and you can see that it, the formula is being correctly applied all the way down. So that's a pretty fast way to apply that calculation across all of the rows. Just for ease of visualizing, I'm just gonna bold some of the headlines here. Now, in the model, it's possible for these activations or these similarities to be raised to an exponent. Um, so what I like to do is um, have an exponent value here, let's say three, for example. So the activation is going to be the similarity raised to the exponent three. Now I could do an exponent, that's this hat, that's shift six, you get that little hat. I could do a three just like this, and that's gonna do the exponent three on that number. What I'd like to do instead is a formula where I take this value and raise it to the exponent of the value in this cell here. And why I would do that is because later on I could quickly change this to a one or a five or whatever I wanted, and it would change it for all of these. Um, so we're gonna use the dollar sign trick again. We're gonna keep the dollar sign on over the three so that when we drag down, um, 
this red part of the formula never changes, but the blue part will change. So like here example, this is a, this value to the exponent three, or this value to the exponent three here. All right, so the next part, we're gonna to have to zoom out a little bit. What we wanna do now is multiply our memory traces by their activations. So we're gonna weight memory. The word for this is weighted memory. We're gonna need 10 spots, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna right click. No, whoop, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. I'm going to do column width, set that to two, maybe maybe set it to three. Um that's good enough. And so my goal here is to have each of these numbers, so this number times, so it's a star, this number here. This is the activation. Um, and want to keep the red five, whoops, keep the red five. So I'm going to do a dollar sign in front of that five and drag across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Um, I guess it's it's kind of hard to see whether we're getting the correct answers here. So I'm going to increase the width a little bit more because I I did mess up. So this this part's correct. I think one times. 0.515, and it's rounding up. This should be a zero, this should be a zero, so zero, zero, zero. This should, but this one is wrong. So how did that formula work? Okay, that part, oh, so the red one came over and I don't want that. Uh, whoops, let's redo this. Uh, so put the dollar sign in front of the, in front of the M. right so that means as we go more to the right this value is not going more to the right it's just staying right here so essentially this turns all the ones and negative ones into uh positive 0.51s or negative 0.51s or sorry 0 0.51 0 0.52 because it's rounded and we want to do the same thing for this row here turn all of these ones and negative ones into positive 0.36s or negative 0.36s. And uh, we should be able to just drag all of this down and that will um, apply our formula to each of the cells as we wanted it to. So the next two things, um, we have this concept of global activation this is the sum, so I just typed sum, left parenthesis, and I'm dragging the numbers I want to sum, right parenthesis, press enter. We're calculating the global activation here. We also want to calculate the echo, which is the sum of all the values in each column and I can get the sum of the first column that's here, and I can just drag this across. So now I've got the sum of all the different columns. So we're getting pretty close to uh, what we had over here. Uh, the last parts are to create a way to uh, evaluate the, the echo 
and put it in this graph. So to do that, I'm just going to come down here, um, make a Q row. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is copy it so that whatever the values are here, are this, whatever they are here, they'll get copied over here. Um, and just let me show you a quick aspect of this. So each, so this value is, it's referencing this cell here. And if I change this one to, let's say a two, it's gonna update and we'll see a two over here. Put it back. Same thing with the echo. I'm gonna, I'm just making referenced copies. And you'll see why in a moment. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is calculate the correlation between the Q and the echo. We've got a pretty high correlation here. And so this is like the prototype abstraction example from the second mini lecture. All of the traces are sort of noisy versions of this Q and uh, of this Q pattern. And, and the echo uh, does a nice job of reconstructing that pattern, even though none of the individual examples really had that exact same pattern. It's got a really strong correlation. The next part is let's make a little graph so we can see what the Q looks like and see what the echo looks like. And to do that, uh, we can just highlight these two rows and we're gonna find so this is the part that might be a little bit different in Google Sheets. Uh, draw, insert. Yeah, we're gonna insert and that I, this one would work. You could do insert chart, bar chart. Uh, oh, I guess a column chart. I'm gonna delete that. Insert chart, column. And uh, this is essentially what we're looking for. Um, blue is the Q, orange is the echo. And now we've made a little Minerva model simulator. So we can mess around with it if we wanted to. Uh, for example, we could change the types of cues and traces. Um, let me do that real quick. I'm just going to put, uh, let's see. I'm just going to put a bunch of zeros in the first one. If you have all zeros, it break. whoops, it, it breaks the model. Um, so what I'll quickly do here is um, I'll put a, a one here and I'm going to have some memories where there's ones at the front and uh, how about ones at the end. I'm going to have some uh, memories where there's uh, ones in the second position and uh, ones at the end, I guess. Really simple cue recall kind of situation. And uh, if we probe with a one at the beginning, we, we return an echo that's expecting something at the end. If we, re if we put a one uh, in the second position, we can see that the echo is now expecting something in the ninth position because of that that's where it usually was before in memory and uh, this was just another quick example to show you that if you start changing the the patterns in the memory traces and the patterns in the cues uh, this whole thing calculates itself out and shows you what the cue pattern and echo pattern look like um and yeah there's a pretty simple Minerva simulator that you can play around with. Uh, 
So if you're able to get your spreadsheet working or at least something kind of close, uh, feel free to submit that for uh, points towards your grade. And uh, I hope you found this assignment useful.